diltiazem is a medication you need to be aware of. It's actually a calcium channel blocker, and a lot of our calcium channel blockers are going to end in the P-I-N-E, but there's a couple that don't. One of those is diltiazem. Its trade name is cardizem. Indication is hypertension, angina, SVT, AFib, a flutter. okay? So, like I said, it's a calcium channel blocker, and therapeutic class is anti-anginal, anti-arrhythmic, anti-hypertensive. Like I said already, the indication for it is basically those things, hypertension, angina, SVT, okay? So what it does, it's a calcium channel blocker, like we said. What it does, it inhibits that transportation of calcium, which by doing that, it inhibits the excitation and contraction of the cardiac muscle. Okay, and what this does, it leads to a depression of the AV and the SA node, and that leads to a decrease in heart rate. It also causes vasodilation, and that's going to lead to decrease in blood pressure. Okay, so understanding those things, understanding what it's doing, that it's going to have an effect on the AV and the SA node, and that's kind of how it's going to slow our heart rate. And then by blocking those calcium channels, it's going to lead to vasodilation and decrease our blood pressure. Okay, so understanding those things, we can kind of jump to what our nursing considerations are going to be. So obviously, it's going to be contraindicated in second and third degree AV block. Remember, with these AV blocks, the patient is already going to uh, uh, has a uh, physiological block of that AV node. Now, if we throw diltiazem at that, we're going to further... Uh, inhibit that AV node or block that AV node and make that condition even worse. So we don't want to give this with a second degree or third degree AV block. It can also cause arrhythmias. Um, it can increase digoxin levels. You don't want to use this with grapefruit juice. Like I always say, once a patient starts taking a lot of medications, once they have, once they have a lot of comorbidities, we just want to have them kind of avoid grapefruit juice. We're going to assess for signs of CHF. We want to monitor, obviously, our EKG very closely. Okay, we want the patient to change position, position slowly because this can, you know, it's going to lower the blood pressure, it can lead to the orthostatic hypotension. We also want to instruct the patient on how to take their pulse and how to take their blood pressure. All right. A couple other things we want to keep in mind it can lead uh, to this bradycardia, it can lead to peripheral edema, gingival hyperplasia, and even CHF. Okay, so there's some very big uh, considerations to keep in mind here. Biggest thing you want to keep in mind is how it's going to be affecting our vessels and where it's working in the heart, okay? And that we want to really use a lot of caution with with uh, AV blocks, okay? So that is diltiazem or cardizem. This has been another episode of the nursing.com MedMaster podcast. My name is John Haas, RN, CCR, and alumnus, and I want to give you our free download of the 50 most commonly prescribed medications. To get that free download, just go to nursing.com slash 50 meds. That's five zero nursing.com slash 50 meds. We love you guys. We want you to succeed. That's why we provide clear, concise, and visual supplement for nursing school and the clinical floor. We love you guys. Go out and be your best selves. Happy nursing.